Time is, is, is a human invention. The rotation and translation movements of the Earth is what gives you time, and we have come up with this little device to, to, to measure that. I mean, it is kind of crazy. You know, everybody relates to a watch because it tells time. And time is what connects us, you know. For the last two years, I've been working here in this small shop in Grand Central. It's more art than work, really. And for any kind of uh, art, you see you need a quiet place to do it. People don't know what a watchmaker is. People think that a watchmaker is the guy who changed the battery of your watch in a corner. But that is not watchmaking. I was born originally in Honduras, and I relocated to New York uh, 11 years ago. I didn't know I would fix watches here when I came here. I was doing whatever was available because you had to survive. And I hadn't fixed watches for a while, although I did that when I was a little kid in Honduras. Many people who come here from other countries, everybody has a, a skill, something to offer. It's very common in those countries to, to have a trade and then use that trade to make it through college. We don't have schools for this. You gotta go the old-fashioned way. You gotta find a, an old master who would be willing to take you under his wing and train you. When I came in here uh, to make it like everybody else, I decided to try watchmaking again. If you see a watch inside of you have, uh, it's so small, some little things. Nowadays we have so much technology to make those little parts. But a hundred years ago, there were people making those little screws and those little things by hand. You know, everything is beautiful inside. And you see some watches, it's closed, the back is sealed. You cannot see what is inside. But it's beautiful, it's still beautiful even though you cannot see it. When you're working on a watch for a couple hours, sometimes you need a break. But the type of break you need, it cannot be, I mean, the change is so sudden. Like, I'm in a little cubicle fixing a watch and then you just open the door of the shop and you see Grand Central. It's like too much, you know. There's, it should be more gradual, I guess. Uh, every time is rush hour here. I never see quiet time. Uh, 
there's no comparison. Just imagine being in a very loud place 24-7. Even those who say that they enjoy people all the time, they need also, you know, a, a, a little moment alone. Everybody does. lifestyle you have when you're a watchmaker is eight hours of your day where nobody talks to you, you're in a quiet place, there's no distraction. You cannot leave fingerprint inside of watch, you cannot leave any a speck of dust, you cannot scratch the movement. It's, it's a spring loaded. It's a little spring that really gives all this power inside this little movement to move. There's no electronics or anything. It's a little mechanical device. cities like New York, everybody depends on motion time and it becomes a habit. And even people who don't wear a watch all the time, they have their cell phones now with displaying the time all the time and everybody's checking that every five seconds and there's no need for that. You become like a slave of punctuality and, and time. You're looking at, staring at your watch all the time, and then you realize you have nothing to do and no place to go. You see, uh, not too long ago, people are still, in some places, I guess, people are still looks up to the sky to tell time. Sometimes I try to forget about it. I don't even wear a watch. Uh, I need the time maybe three times a day when I wake up and to know that I gotta be at work at eight o'clock in the morning. And when it's time to leave, the rest I'll try just to live freely.